And now for the, the last take of the last lesson of the course, I'd like to throw this question back at Brian. Okay, so Brian, where do you think the big breakthroughs are going to be happening over the next 10 years? Well, I think there's going to be a lot happening in the next 10 years. You talk about planets. I think we're going to start even being able to look in the atmospheres of planets and look for the first signs of life. I doubt if we'll find it, but we're going to be able to start at least doing that question. Uh, I see us being able to look to see the literally the first stars in the universe, seeing the first supernovae, really understanding how the lifeless universe became the very exciting universe we live in today. And the big, extremely large telescopes and JWST will literally you know, be able to piece together how those, those first stars formed. And we'll be able to piece together the Milky Way star by star and compare the fossil record to the direct fossil record that we see by looking so far in the past. Uh, and, you know, I'm pretty optimistic about dark matter. I think there's a very good chance we're going to discover the dark matter particle. And that will revolutionize uh, probably not astronomy so much, but as particle physics. Because if they open that up, they're going to have uh, probably a whole wealth of other things that happens there. So for me, those are the big things that I see have sort of a 10-year horizon. There'll be a lot of other things, of course, that I haven't predicted. But... To my mind, those are almost sure bets. Uh, well, dark matter is not a sure bet, but uh, I think the beginning of you know the epic of stars, being able to look for the signs of life in other nearby planets, those look pretty solid to me. And let's finally go much further out to 100 years. Uh, where are we going to be then? What are the big yeah, issues? Yeah, so the do 100 you think? years I find quite uh, challenging. Like you, the human aspect is something that concerns me. Maybe not so much on the computer side, although that does is an interesting one. But I, we're manipulating the genome in a way which uh, is quite remarkable. And I see humanity, one way or another, start mucking around with our own DNA to try to you know, make us better, make us super in some way. Um, there's going to be huge ethical questions around that, and it does kind of scare me, but I see that as being something that happens. Yes, I always wonder about if we prolong life long enough so everyone lives to a thousand, then you know, we are still going to be the senior professors a thousand years from now, and uh, that could close down progress quite well if the old gods stay around forever and never die. Well, especially if we go senile as part of the process. But uh, So, you know, it, it is challenging. I mean, I do see lots of challenges. You know, the, the world is, a, is changing rapidly. The next hundred years, we're going to have to cope with having too many people on the planet and sort that out. And science and technology will be in the middle of that. For astronomy itself, my guess is a hundred years from now, we will have discovered life on another planet. That, that, I think, if we're able to make progress, I think we'll have done that by then. Uh, I think we'll almost certainly know what dark matter is by then, if, if it is a particle. If it's not a particle, then we may well not know. I don't think we're going to know what dark energy is yet. I think that could big still cool, be the Dark big energy still mystery. be a problem 100 years from now. Yeah, I don't think we'll have been able to link together quantum mechanics and gravity yet. I, I just see that as being an incredibly hard problem. And I don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, you know, some light switch will go off in someone's brain probably. But on the other hand, I may well be wrong on that pessimistic prog, um, you know, prognosis for dark energy. Because it may well be that these big experiments we do over the next 10 years to say what is the equation of state of dark energy. If they come back with something other than Einstein's cosmological constant, unchanging over time, uh, if we get something that is changing over time, then we're going to have the crowbar in the little crevice and we're going to be able to work, at it, work on it. And that's why those precision measurements are interesting and useful, is they provide perhaps the crack in the found of something that looks impenetrable. So, uh, you know, it, the 100-year the time uh, scale is a little scary, uh, but it's exciting. And as with you, uh, I will hopefully be able to watch 40 or 50 years in the next 100 years. Uh, many of the people watching this course will be able to see a good fraction of those 100 years. And hopefully be the people doing much of this. Yeah, and, and so if you think back 100 years in 1914, uh, people were wondering whether or not this war that had broken out in Europe was going to be a big thing. Uh, they were wondering whether or not these automobiles were ever going to become something that was really useful. 
Uh, they had read Jules Verne, trying to figure out what Jules was thinking about uh, making his submarine powered the same way the sun is. We didn't understand any of that. So mm. I think it's going to be really exciting just to sit back and watch. But, uh, you know, a little scary. It's like a roller coaster ride, I have a feeling. And we've both been talking about extrapolating what's going on at the moment. So these are the questions that we know now, which of them will be answered. But of course, if you'd asked 20 years ago, what were the big questions? You wouldn't even ask the question, what is dark energy? You didn't know it existed. So the, uh, my hope is we're going to have a few more really big surprises. So you go back to 1950 and look forward. They, they didn't know that quasars existed. They didn't yeah. know. Most of the questions we're trying to answer now weren't even asked back then. So to my mind, the really exciting thing is going to be the totally out of left field, unexpected things that are going to come through and that the questions we're going to be debating then will be questions we couldn't even ask now because we didn't know they were real. I agree. But I promise you, whether or not there's life on other planets will still be an interesting question until it's answered. So that concludes this part of the course. And in fact, that is the end of the entire series of four courses. We hope you've enjoyed uh, listening to us and interacting with these courses we very much enjoy teaching and filming these things and i would just encourage you know this is uh learning is a lifetime activity so uh please go out and explore the universe on your own terms and thank you for spending uh your time with us over these 36 lectures for those of you who have done the whole course for those of you who haven't we'll be starting all over again yeah.